Judge, good morning. Good morning. I, I want to follow up a little bit about um, government and religion. Um, what do you think the state of the law is in terms of the U.S. Supreme Court jurisprudence on the extent to which or how one draws the line with respect to which government can or cannot burden my religious beliefs? I mean, I think as a general proposition, I can't reasonably expect government to uh, promote my religious beliefs, uh, but government shouldn't unduly burden my religious beliefs. That's the easy part. How do you, how do you apply that? Well, I have to follow Supreme Court precedent. There's a lot of Supreme Court precedent in that area. I'd have to look to that first and foremost and follow it. And um, that, but, that but what, what is what, what what does the precedent tell us in terms of how how one should make that sometimes subtle distinction? Well, I, you know, precedent tells us, as you indicated, that the, the, the government can make no law that would establish or be the constitute the establishment of a religion. Uh, with respect to the free exercise of religion, uh, the core right to worship, of course, is protected. Mm -hmm. Worship in the church in the church of our choice. Uh, and that bubble sort of expands as we leave the church and exercise our religious beliefs in other areas. And uh, so that, that's, and when it starts to get into the area where perhaps it's uh, in conflict with someone else's right, then that's where some of the tension comes in. But uh, my appreciation of Supreme Court precedent is that's uh, generally the approach that one has to look at. But of course, there's precedent that I would have to look at to, to make any decision. Sure. Well, under Supreme Court precedent, let's say, say for example, and I, I don't know the answer to this, I'm not trying to trick you. Um, if my religion prohibits me from having any, any interaction, let's say, with, with, with the healthcare delivery system, um, and, and my, my, my son is very sick, it's clear that with proper medical care, he would be saved. He's a minor, let's say. And, and I say, look, leave my son alone. God will heal him. Um, should the state be able to come in and say, hey, um, we're not saying you're wrong, but let's go, let's use belt and suspenders. Let's depend on God and a doctor. Well, Senator, I want to be careful. I think there is some debate out there about yeah. this kind of issue, and to the extent it may get into political questions or possibly the subject of something that could become a legal sure. case, I really, I probably have to be careful about answering that question. Okay. So. Well, let's suppose that uh, I said my religion, uh, there's a, let's suppose there's a public accommodations clause in, 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 uh, my state constitution, there is, and, and we have public accommodation statutes at the federal level. Uh, let's suppose I said that uh, my, my religion prohibits me from uh, associating with people um, whose genetic makeup I don't approve. And they can't do business in my, with my retail establishment. I'm, I'm trying to think of a status mm. uh, that is immutable. Where do you draw the line there? Can I do that? Well, a state can always provide greater rights than are afforded in the yeah. uh, federal constitution. Well, so let me just cut to the chase. Let me, let, I'm sort of dancing around it. Let's suppose I took the position that my religion religion prohibits me from associating with people of color, okay? Um, and it's a sincere, it, it, it doesn't, by the way, I'm a Methodist. Um, I was raised Presbyterian. My wife, when we got married, was Methodist, so we compromised, I became a Methodist. <laughs> um, uh, but, but let's suppose I, I belong to a religion that said I, I'm not supposed to worship with people of color, but under our public accommodations law, it says you have to let everybody come in. Where do you draw the line? And my, let's suppose mine is a sincerely held religious belief. I mean, I really, let's suppose I really believe it. I don't, of course, but I did. What, 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 what's government's role here? Well, the government's role is to ensure that uh, not just uh, your sincerely held religious beliefs are given due regard and protection, but that others 
constitutional rights are also yeah. protected. So when those come into conflict is really where uh, the difficult issues arise. And, and if that situation arose, I would have to look at Supreme Court cases or any other precedent that talks about that, that kind of scenario. I understand. I mean, we, we're, we're starting to see a lot, see it a lot in terms of abortion. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, don't, I don't believe in abortion. Some people do. I believe that the, uh, that's a human being. Other people believe that it's just a fetus. Um, and it takes on re religious connotations. Uh, obviously, the government has and probably will continue to set rules about abortion. Where do you draw the line there? Well, again, uh, I, I recognize that's a very important issue. It's a very serious issue yeah. to but where do you people. think that What I'm asking is, where do you think, and then I'm going to shut up, Mr. Chairman, where do you think the Supreme Court has drawn the line? What's the test? Well, I think right now the, the test is uh, generally that the government cannot impose an undue burden on uh, a woman's right to seek an abortion. Uh, that was the uh, decision in Casey. Uh, so I think that generally sets forth the test. Uh, but of course, I recognize there are a lot of um, uh, differences of opinion uh, about where that can be done and where it can't be done and what undue burden consists of. So that's a scenario where I'd have to look at whatever precedents out there and try and, and figure out what the right result should be. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.